One other thing I should have mentioned real quickly at the end of the last video is that the relative frequencies should sum to 1. Because when you're finding relative frequency, you're finding what percent was in each category. Okay, But by the total, you should have 100%, right? So I could say 100%, that would also work. Or 1, same thing. Okay. Um, sometimes they will be a little bit off. Sometimes they'll be like 99.9% .9 or something. That that can sometimes happen with rounding. Um, you could round everything correctly, but because you rounded, you might be a tiny bit off. So don't freak out if it, you're like 1.01% or 99.9%. .9%. That's not the end of the world. That usually is just a rounding issue. All right, so now we're going to construct some bar graphs. And I mentioned here doing it in with Excel. Now a bar graph is just like what you think. It's got bars in it. Um, with with vertical lines and horizontal lines and all that stuff. And it shows the frequency or it can show the relative frequency. All right. And that's what they write up here. And again, just like the last videos, I'm not going to read every single definition to you, but that's what they're talking about. So we're going to learn how to do it with Excel. So let's bring Excel into the party, shall we? Hold on. There it is. Okay. So and again, you could just click on this icon down here and bring it up. So I'm going to make a relative frequency bar chart, and you are too. It's not even that hard, I swear. So all you do is you go here, top left corner, and you hold down your left mouse button and drag it down into the right. It's called highlighting. You can see how all those cells are highlighted. Now don't grab the totals. That would be bad. Just grab the numbers and their categories. Then you go to the Insert menu and you go to column and you click on the column and there you go it's not as pretty as mine but you know it works all right now let me go delete the frequency we don't want that and then I'm gonna change the name of this so I'm just gonna click up in here where it has this title and I'm gonna change it to what I had titled it before which I don't remember frequency bar graph okay so I'm gonna make it frequency bar graph of M and M colors. There. Now if yours didn't have that title, it would mean um, that you didn't highlight maybe the categories. It's not a big deal. You can just click up, if you click on the chart, these chart tools pop up. You can go to layout, chart title right there. And you have one above the chart. That's what this is. This is an above chart title. Above chart, chart title, yes. All right, now I also want to label my axes because like all good mathematicians, we are always going to label our, our axes of our graphs. So I'm going to put one below the axis. So horizontal axis, go down here to title below axis. I'm going to say M and oh, M color. Enter. Oops, if I could type it right. There we go. And now I'm going to do another one, vertical this time. Personally, I like the rotated display best. I mean, you can use the other ones if you like, but I like the rotated. So this is frequency. Enter. Fabulous. All right, so that looks pretty good. It's pretty much identical to what we have in the notes right there. Right? It is. Yeah, I know. This one's more fun because it has color. Oh, well. All right, let me show you how to do that. If you click on one of the bars, you can kind of see it, but there's little dots on the tops of all the bars, which means all of them are changed. Oops, sorry, I clicked off of it. Now I'm in trouble. All right, so let me go back. So I click on the bars and all the bars are highlighted. See it? Now you can go up here to design. I mean, if you want, you can click there and change all the bars to a different color, and that's fine. Um, if you want to just submit a graph, a regular graph, without all the colors different, that's totally okay with me. You can talk to your instructor. Now, if you click again on a bar, let me click on a brown one here. I'm going to click again on it. I'm going to right click and go over here to the colors. And you can choose what color you want to fill it in. Like, let's say it's brown, so I want to make it brown. There we go. And then I'm going to click, oops, that's all of them highlighted again. I click again. There's the green one highlighted. And I go over here to the little paint bucket. I'm going to go down here and make it green and so on. All right, let me pause and I'm going to, well, I'll do one more. Click. There we go. Now it didn't highlight all of them there that time. I don't know why, but that's okay. And I'm going to go over here to the bucket. I'm going to make it orange. I should be clear. You can also, if you click, go right down to format data point, go to fill, solid fill, and you can change the paint bucket in there too. So that's an